Dear students, now we are going to look at the RN tertiary structures in depth. As you know that the RNA structures are formed as a result of the nucleotide coupling in the primary structure of the RNA. This yields the secondary structures or the two prime structures. However, even after the two prime structure is formed, some of the nucleotides, they remain uncoupled. So, of course, they are open for interaction and coupling with some other unpaired nucleotide in the RNA structure. The unpaired bases that are left out in the two prime structures are looking for ways to find other un unpaired RNA bases. So, as a result, they come together and they form the tertiary structures as we will just see. As you know the case of the pseudonauts that are formed as a result of the RNA molecule making structure by the coupling of the four nucleotide bases that were unpaired with the three prime strand of the RNA. Dear students, as you know the case of the kissing hairpins as well, in which case the four unpaired nucleotide bases, they come together and a new tertiary structure is formed as well as the hairpin bulge contact in which case a hairpin with its four unpaired nucleotides is bonded with the unpaired nucleotides in the bulge. So these tertiary structures that are formed are very important in the function of the RNA that we'll see later on. Okay, so I will give you an example of the RNA tertiary structure. If you see here, if you remember, the two prime hairpin loop the secondary structure is shown here in this portion. If you look ahead, there is the internal loop as shown by the asymmetric number of unpaired nucleotide bases. And then there is the external unpaired base in the helix. This is the helix and this is the unpaired base. So we call this as an external base in the helix. Then of course, there is the multi-loop or the junction. As you can see, there are three different strands of helices that are coming together in order to form this multi-loop. And the uncoupled bases are shown here. More so, there is the bulge, which includes just one nucleotide base in this case, in here. And when all of this comes together, a very big tertiary structure is formed, which is ready to take active part in the biological processes. Dear students, what if some of the nucleotides still remain unpaired? As you would have realized that we have been trying to couple the nucleotides with each other as much as possible in the secondary structure as well as the tertiary structure. But it is the case that there are some nucleotides that are still unpaired and are open to interaction with other secondary or tertiary RNA structures. The best solution for such a case is that they become paired with other unpaired nucleotides. However, if that is not the case, then the RNA molecule can actually fold onto itself within the tertiary structure, which may result in the formation of the pseudonauts. More so, in this example, we will see how a pseudonaut can be formed. If this is a helix and these are the unpaired bases that are ready to be coupled with other nucleotides, you may carefully see that there are some other nucleotide bases that are also available and open for interaction towards the formation of the tertiary structure. So what can happen is that each one of these nucleotide base can couple with its complementary partner. A may couple with U. G may form a hydrogen bond with C. C may form a hydrogen bond with G and so on and so forth. This will obviously result in the folding of this structure further. And the final structure will look like this. This is 
what a pseudo knot looks like in the tertiary structures of the RNA molecule. So, dear students, a one prime or the primary structure of the RNA folded to form the two prime or the secondary structure. Several secondary structures they came together to form a tertiary structure, and yet some unpaired bases within the tertiary structures they came together to form pseudo knots. The important point here is that if such pseudo knots can be formed, how can we detect them? 